This video is going to look at how we write the chemical formula for salts. Salts are examples of ionic compounds and are formed between the reactions of acids and bases or acids with metal carbonates. So salts are really, really common um, and we need to be able to work out their formula based upon their ions. Now, this is a copy of the periodic table you will get given in your exam. And the first thing you should do when you get walk into your exam is write on it. Um, so that you don't have to remember every single ion that's on the periodic table. Now, the first thing you should do is look at group 1, which is this column here, and at the top of that, write plus 1. That's because every element in group 1 has one electron in its outer shell, so it will lose that electron and form a plus 1 charge. Group 2 will all form pl plus 2 charges. We then go over to group 3, which will form plus 3. We miss out um, group 4, because carbon will co form covalent bonds rather than ionic bonds. And then group 5, we put minus 3, group 6, minus 2, and group 7, minus 1, because they will gain electrons rather than lose them. Now, we've obviously missed out the transition metal element, so any element that falls in the middle of the periodic table here Okay, we can always assume is a plus 2 charge. However, there are two exceptions to that. Number one, if they give you an example where they state, say for example iron, and they put Roman numerals after it, then that will dictate the charge. So this is the Roman numeral for 2, so that would be Fe2+, plus, so iron 2+. Plus. Um, we could have also had iron Three. So that would tell us that we've got iron 3 plus. The only other exception is silver, which is Ag, which just forms plus 1 charges. And those are the only exceptions you need to remember. So all of the others we can assume, for the time being at GCSE level, that they are plus 2 charges. So that is to help you remember any iron in the periodic table that is an element on its own, what its charge is. So if you see an element you're unsure of, so if it says sulphur, you look for sulphur on the periodic table, look what group it's in, and see what charge that is. So it has a plus two charge, as does oxygen. If you were looking for sodium, sodium's in group one, so it has plus one charges. If you were looking for magnesium, that's in group two, so it forms plus two charges. Aluminium, plus three, etc. If you get a metal that's in the middle, for example, copper, copper is in the middle of the periodic table here, there, that means it's a plus two charge, unless it says otherwise with Roman numerals. So now, we need to be able to use that to calculate the formula of simple salts. Okay, so there are two methods by which we can calculate the formula of a salt, and we'll cover both, um, but we'll focus on one in particular. So, when you see the name of a salt, so magnesium chloride, you can then break that down into its ions. So we look on the periodic table for magnesium, we see that that is in group 2, so that forms magnesium 2 plus ions. Then we look on the periodic table again for chlorine, and we see that chlorine forms minus 1 ions. Now any ionic salt, the charges have to balance out. So because magnesium is plus 2, and chlorine is minus 1, they have to balance. So I need two chlorine atoms to cancel that out. Now, a way I could write that is I've got plus 2, and I can add that to my minus 1 charge, so that equals minus 1. So that doesn't equal 0, so I have to add an additional chlorine so that I've got two uh, minus charges so that it equals zero, so that they cancel out. So that would be one method to get my end formula, which is magnesium Cl2, MgCl2. Now, some people are able to do that method very quickly and easily in their heads. However, some people struggle with that method. So we're going to look at an alternative as well. Once you've wrote down your two ions, what you can then do is just write out the symbols again. But this time, to work out how many you need, you multiply them by the charge on the opposite ion. 
So to work out how many magnesiums I need, I look at the number on the chlorine, so I only need one magnesium atom. To work out how many chlorines I need, I look at the number on the magnesium, so I need two of those. And then all I do as my final step is write that out neatly again. So if I've got a 1, I don't need to write that. So I can write MgCl2. Let's have a look at another example, this time sodium oxide. So sodium is in group 1 of the periodic table. So you look on your periodic table and see that it's plus 1. And oxygen, you'll see, is in group 6. So look for oxygen. Because it's in group 6, that means it has minus 2 charges. So we can do the same steps again. So write out just the symbols. And to work out how many sodiums I need, I look at the number on the oxygen. So I need two. And to work out how many oxygens I need, I look at the number on the sodium. So I need one. So again, I could write it out neatly as Na2O. And remember, that is the chemical formula of the salt. If I was doing in a balanced equation, I may still need several multiples of this. But that is the basic formula. So now let's look at when we've got, rather than just two elements, when we're adding one ion and a polyatomic ion together. All the examples we've just looked at are examples of ions that come from one single element. Now, we can also get ions that are what we call polyatomic, okay, or compound ions. That means they are ions made from two elements that are joined by a, co a covalent bond. So, there are five examples that you need to be familiar with and remember. The first is the hydroxide ion, which is OH. So, hydro for hydrogen and oxide for oxygen. And that always has a minus one charge, always. The next one is sulfate. Now the sulfate ion is SO4, two minus, so it has a minus two charge. Now to help you remember that, remember that eight means the element, which in this case is sulfur, with oxygen. So think of it as like eight, like mate. So its friend is oxygen, so it's always with oxygen. So if you see the phrase eight at the end of a word, that means it's the element with oxygen. So SO4 minus two. Nitrate, we've got the eight again. So it's nitrogen and oxygen, but it's NO3 this time, and it's minus one. Carbon eight is carbon with three oxygens, and that's always minus two. And the last one, ammonium. The ammonium ion is the only one of these that is positive, and that's NH4, and that's plus one as well. So these are the five polyatomic ions that you just have to learn. Um, you will not be asked to use the phosphoric um, acid ion, the phosphate ion, in a chemical equation. You will be asked to do that with word equations, but not in symbols. So you don't need to learn that. So now let's have a look at some examples of salt compounds with polyatomic ions. So we do the same process again. So potassium, we look on our periodic table, is in group 1, so it has a plus 1 charge. And our nitrate is nitrogen with oxygen, and that is always NO3 minus 1. That's something we've just got to learn. So at that point, we multiply each ion by the charge on the opposite ion. So potassium is we multiply it by the number on the nitrate, so that's we need one of those. And when I do my nitrate, remember the nitrate is a group of ions. So the whole group of them I need to times by the number on the potassium. So that's only one. So that one's straightforward and is KNO3. Which should make sense if you think about the first method we looked at. They just need to balance. So plus one balances with minus one. If we look at copper hydroxide, copper is in the middle of the periodic table, so that's an example of one that we know is just plus two. So copper is plus two, and hydroxide is OH minus, and it's minus one. So we put our copper and multiply that by the charge number on the hydroxide, which is just one, and our hydroxide, again we have to multiply all of that group, by the number on the copper, which is 2. So the formula for copper hydroxide 
is Cu brackets HO, the hydroxide, and then we need two of those to balance. Last example we'll look at is ammonium sulfate. So both of these are now polyatomic ions. So ammonium is NH4, and that's plus one. And sulfate is SO4, two minus. And again, you just have to learn the formula of those polyatomic ions. So we write them out again. So NH4, and to work out how many of those we need, we times it by the charge on the sulfate, which is two. And then we write out our sulfate. And to work out how many of those we need, we times it by the charge on the ammonium, which is just one. So to write that out neatly, I can now put my NH4, and we need two of those, and I don't need to write the one, so I can then just put SO4. Now, naming salts requires you to use the information you are given in the periodic table and to remember these ions, the hydroxide ion, the sulfate ion, the nitrate ion, the carbonate ion, and the ammonium ion. If you don't understand any of the points, watch the video back and break it down and follow the steps. We'll be given plenty of examples and lessons, and if you're still not sure, speak to your teacher.